This video is sponsored by Quark. Let's jump into stage two, a thumbnail drawing. This might intimidate you when I bring up the topic of drawing, but anybody can thumbnail draw. Especially if you're working on icons, you don't have to be a fine artist. This is the level of drawing you need to do. It's all about, it's not about refinement. It's all about capturing the essence of an idea. And so at this stage, you just want to capture, okay, how do I reflect insight into analytics or whatever? Well, I did this one, but that's a little goofy. Nobody's ever going to use it, although I kind of like it, you know, but something like this might work. And you saw the one I created, actually, which is this was the thumbnail I did for it. So this is how you capture the essence of an idea to reflect those metaphors, to reflect this specific theme in this uh, this set that I showed you previously, that's how you work through it. That's how you draw it initially. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can make perfect squares and rectangles in Illustrator without any effort whatsoever. So don't get intimidated by drawing. Use it as a way to problem solve and think through how to solve something. It's a supercharger for cognitive thinking. Whether you draw analog like me, my daughter does all of her drawing on an iPad. So if you prefer that, by all means, go that way as well. So here's my daughter's sketches for um, the Fair Game project. These were all her thumbnail sketches. The You see the initial thumbnail sketch she did of a deer cupid when I mentioned it. And then we came up with the idea, hey, what if it was a heart, but it was made from a hook for fishing and like a goose because we need a long neck to make the heart shapes. <laughs> and so these were the thumbnails she did, but it captures a good essence where the heart is being formed by the antlers. A lot of good ideas here. And it's just capturing the idea. Is it the exact look and feel? Well, obviously not. It's all about mining ideas, not refining them. We will do that later. But right now, it's all about getting all those ideas out of your head, even if they're bad ones. It's important to do that. You want to move past the bad because that's the only way to find those gems that work really well. You'll want to use reference as you start to refine these ideas, as you start to uh, polish them. Not that you're reflecting the real world to exact uh, proportions, but it's going to guide your efforts so you can look at what makes an elk or a deer look like a deer and then capture and deduce those elements so that you can draw them in a more perfected way. And this is where we came to the rough drawing. It's at this stage, we usually print my daughter's sketches out and I go old school and I just take vellum, put it over the top and I start drawing on top and I said, okay. And I even brought up reference of archers to see how is their arm position when it's pulled back on the bow. And I realized that elbow really cranks up. So I adjusted that. I adjusted this foot to ground it better and adjusted the bow as well. So these are just some of the art direction that we do along the way. We make those improvements. Uh, this shows some of the rough sketches I did initially. Initially in my thumbnail sketches, this one up here is absurd with the, the bent rod and the, the rifle, but it didn't go farther than this. But I do kind of like this one, which is a fish and a ram head. So I'll probably build it out, even though I don't think the client's going to go for it. I'll build it out just because... I always have that idea then if I just leave it in a sketch form, I'm never going to get back to it. So that's why I always tend to build some of the ideas that I don't think have merit, but I still like regardless. Uh, this is how I tighten them up. I just want to draw them in more a precise fashion. This is when I switch to a mechanical pencil just to make the process easier uh, to uh, create those fine lines. So anybody can do this drawing and the more you draw, the better you get. That's the benefit of it. This is going to be a roadmap for vector building. You can practice this on personal projects. Don't have to draw perfect. But knowing you're going to create perfectly inside Illustrator with circles and rectangles, um, it makes it fairly simple to build out. So I always kind of 
create my own stuff just for the fun of it. And it never fails. At some point, I learned something that, wow, I need to use that the next time I do this or that. It's the way you grow and develop your skills. So here's a good example of thumbnail drawing in the context of iconography. The art director gave me this printout shown on right and what icons they need. We need icons for eggs and a measuring cup that shows this much liquid in it and this one that shows this much liquid in it. Uh, we need to show somehow that it's 350 degrees. So I'm and so forth. So this is all I did for my drawing. And then I just built everything uh, just using strokes and expanding them. And these were for the cake box, uh, cake mix box. Um, I have to take a drink. I'm, my throat's getting dry. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, let's jump to the next one. Always use reference. Now, I use reference not only to help improve the communication of something, but in this case, I literally use reference to kind of sketch on top of it, not to trace it, but just to get my proportions right. And I'm working out, okay, how am I going to handle the, the antlers and how is the shape going to be uh, formatted? And I decide to do it symmetric. That way, I only have to build half. And this is how I use reference. So ultimately, my drawing is a symmetric drawing. And then on top of it, I can just build my vector shapes. All of this is line work. I usually use a magenta color when I build, but this is the base raw vectors before I start moving it forward. I'll, I'll increase the size of the strokes coming up uh, to give those volume as well. But this is how all the base art looks. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.